Eek. Is that little like heavy mist rain? <laughs> but there's a lot of wind. So this mist is like you leave something out and it'll eventually be soaked. I'm having a little bit of trouble when a gust comes by. Uh, the slow chair doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I wound up, there was no after stuff. I just talked with Martine and Dennis for a little bit, listened to Martine talk about his knee surgery and all that jazz. <clears throat> Got home, made a pretty drunk TikTok. Uh, took an Advil because I think currently up, to, up for debate on so whether or not my thumb is minorly broken or heavily sprained. But I'm heavily thankful that Martine was there to calm me down after we are doing a, some drills with the running backs, Oklahoma's, and trying to figure out the other positions. And I was fucking them up, and I don't like fucking things up. Hello, water droplet. So, <laughs> we know how that goes. But he goes, but it's not your position. You're not supposed to know how to do this very well. I'm like, but that's the thing. If I don't do it well, then I'm not a perfect, then I'm not a good dummy against the people that do need to learn this position. Okay, well, I made it down to this hour time. I'm still haven't worked out stuff so with <clears throat> Gabriel. He called me at like 120. He said, hey, do you want to push this till three? I'm like, bro, I'm literally getting lunch right now. <laughs> I don't have dime. Like if I had like a car of sorts, then maybe, but, and I, and I do thank him for getting before, you know, in case I did have a car or something like that. I'm like, nah, <laughs> bro, like I'm about ready to leave. <laughs> to be fair, I'd already left and got lunch. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to come down here. Um, and get some drinks and stuff. Aaron and I are going by Porterhouse tonight, so. What's with you, camera? Oh, you're on the LCD, good. However, I do understand, because oh, the weather's shit right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lit Leo, I don't care. Mm, this thumb. Every once in a while, I'll get this mm, with my thumb. <laughs> uh, everybody. Sh checking in on Sunday practice um, but yeah when the gym was closed they were still doing classes outside here but <laughs> I was like bro what are you guys doing so with the rain that's happening right now um, I'm probably gonna put you back in the backpack um, oh the garage nice anyways um, and then walk down to the thing so I was dicking around with Pokemon and I was hanging around. Two boys came around the corner and they were like <coughs> coughing and carrying on with coughing and friends, I guess. And I was like, is this your first time having a cigarette? Is that a fucking clove? Are you guys trying to, what are you guys doing? And they're like, <coughs> I was like, trust me, any flavored marijuana would also come across with the marijuana smell. This smelled like incense. I was like, is that a fucking clove? Are you guys fucking dumbasses? <laughs> okay. We're not ending the vlog today, but Aaron and I are gonna go to Porter House later. I know I brought this up to you guys, it's minutes. To me, this has been like two hours. This is the field, but the rain is being the Netherlands, not letting up. So I'm under the, I'm under the tin roof, steel, whatever it is, the metal roof. And uh, it's gonna, and I understand it sounds like it's harder than it is because that's dripping down from a tree. So it's collecting and hitting really hard, but it's not raining that hard, but it just seems awkward. Cause I thought the rain was supposed to die off, but we have like three apps between us. Cause he's got, a different one that he uses, and I use Bow and Alarm and Bow and Rotter, and that's not quite right. And Bow and Alarm and Bow and Rotter are not syncing up very well with each other. Like, they're not even saying the right stuff. 
so yeah, head back home, drop this stuff off in the fridge, and uh, fridge, cool cast. <laughs> we were just having a conversation about that. Uh, he got out of the car and met me and we chatted for a bit, but yeah, it is currently three o'clock. So if I get home, it's four o'clock, Aaron will be done with work and then we can leave. Hopefully the rain will dip out by then. <sighs> All right, look at that. Wonderfully crisp evening. <laughs> it's not raining. The skies have magically <laughs> cleared. <laughs> I mean, there's dark clouds over there. Um, but like directly above us, it's sort of like it was raining today at all. The only reason I know that is because there's puddles everywhere. <laughs> well, and the fact that I walked around in it. <laughs> I mean, Aaron was sitting next to a door where it was raining, like, yeah. That's like the clouds that are left, aside from those dark boomers over there. And like the direction everything was going, there's, I mean, the only reason I think it, you can see the darker clouds over there is because they are blocking the last brightness of the sky from the setting of the sun. <laughs> Pretty Fridays is sure freaking bright. <laughs> so is Porterhouse. Porterhouse is gonna be very bright. And then them, they figured it out. That bakery back there has it figured out. They literally pipe their bakery smell out onto the sidewalk. <laughs> like their little sign next to the sidewalk has a little tiny fan in it. And every time we walk right in front of that, we're just like, it's warm bread. Like. <laughs> Everyone sort of like says, oh, well, that's just what happens when you're doing a lot of food at like Burger King. And you're like, no, no, they're, they're it's sort of like here at Burger King at Amstel. They are purposely piping their Whopper smell <laughs> from their grill into the station. It's like I could stand outside in Albert Heine and be like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'm standing there on that platform, I'm like, I'm a little hungry. And all of a sudden, Whopper. I'm like, I should go back downstairs. <laughs> Aaron's over there making crummy mess, playing Merge Dragons with our... It's called Turks Abroad, but I think it's just basically French bread. With something we don't eat. Aioli. Hey, that's aioli? Yeah, this is garlic aioli, olive tapenade, which is weird. Aaron's like, yeah, I'll take some of that. And I'm like, but it's got green olives in it. And he doesn't eat hummus, so... I know that you love hummus, so I ate the tapenade, because I like tapenade enough. And this stuff is just, it's odd. It's yeah. like, if it were garlic butter, we'd be eating it all the time. But this is like yeah. super mayonnaise with more garlic than you would ever put in garlic bread. It would probably, or garlic butter. It's, it's almost to the point where you would have butter garlic. <laughs> Burger and shakes over there. Well, yeah, this is the sports bar area pool table, bunch of seats, soccer, Ajax versus Viet, V-I-T, I don't know, my nachos are on the way, Aaron's getting a chicken burger, so hopefully, this the heaters have been turned off, so hopefully the lights won't turn off randomly, but uh, there's Aaron's chicken burger with his fries and my snack. They brought it to me in a bowl, which is weird, but whatever. Oh look, there's a tramp. New tramp. Oh, they're not even new to me. I know they are. I mean, they are technically the newest ones on the line, but the 19 and the 5 have pretty much those running consistently. Mm. <laughs> Although it is odd because it's the 19 and the 5, and I think the one that they put out towards Amstelvane, where which replaced that one metro line that went down. I think I told you why they kind of stopped that metro line, because it was the only reason the metros had a banta wire. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> because everywhere else they have tracks that they can use the third rail effectively. 
<laughs> but they needed to utilize the old cars that still had the pantograph that go up because the metro would come off the metro line and onto regular tram tracks with an overhead wire. <laughs> to eat my nachos and we're gonna head home and probably watch the opening ceremonies. At least run them on in the background. They start at eight, but it's sort of like the Super Bowl. Super Bowl is on at midnight 30. Game probably not even starting till one o'clock or 1.30 because we have to go through every version of every language of every anthem the United States feels like it needs to do. We need to gently caress every military member and then fold the flag in 900 different pieces and then salute it for a solid hour. And then wait for a black person to kneel so we can kick them out of the NFL or something like that. And then we gotta sing the national anthem and gotta have the pre-show and we gotta introduce the teams and we gotta go through the history like <sighs> my drunk ass forgot the camera at the fucking pub so we got here and the bus literally passed by went down this road and passed us and so we came here to the machine and I was like okay we got 15 minutes I literally bullshitted for 13 of those minutes and then I realized I wasn't holding the camera And I had to pee. So, yeah, fun times. We walked up, we walked back, Aaron got the camera, I tinkled, um, and I was definitely on an emergency level of tinkling. But at least, I was like, well, at least they'll walk down there and they'll walk back, because the bus was almost ready to come. Like, it was probably passing by Cooker Plain at that time. Yeah. But now, three minutes. <laughs> so, well, we did have extra steps put in, and we're going to be home a little bit later. It's not going to be that hard, because again, opening ceremony, it's not going to be till well after nine. I'm going to get back to watching it, but like, they went through like the numbers, and it counted down through the seasons and stuff, and it just came up to this thing. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ, China, freaking chill. We'll get Aaron's reaction after it's done. All right, so that got over with. We had to fast forward through like the Parade of Nations cause like, uh, so we didn't actually see it live. It actually aired at like 1235, but I was searching through like NPO AIM and I was like, oh, well look, here's something that aired that's called Winter Olympics, Winter Olympisch. And then it like dot, dot, dot. And it was like three hours long. I was like, that's it. <laughs> so I played it. We watched the intro, fast forward to the Parade of Nations and we saw China, um, watched the middle, and then fast forward through all the speeches, and then watched the closing ceremony. But, Aaron. How are they going to keep that flame lit? Yeah, I know. I uh, mean, if it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. That, that's the whole thing. That flame is supposed to stay lit the entire games. It, it never goes out. Like, there is always an Olympic flame. That's the whole deal. Yes. No. Y yes and no. So, the flame gets ignited in the ceremony in Olympia. Like, we yeah. were... We were there. We were there. And they go through the whole bit with the Maidens of Olympia, and they do it. They light it with the sun and the mirrors, and they light the flame that way. It's great. It was actually interesting. We were there reading it because yeah. we didn't go inside the museum. But we were like, oh, okay, cool. And then they just run it. But the flame gets extinguished okay. at the end of the games. Okay. The whole life of the Olympic flame goes from Olympia and then physically gets moved. I mean, unless it's absolutely necessary for time-wise, you need to work it on a plane. Even then, it's a little funky. Um, but they do try to take boats when possible and time-effective. But, like, if you have to go from, like, Seattle to Japan or even Seattle to Hawaii for a layover... It's funky, and they have special planes for it, but 
But yeah, I I have no idea how they're gonna keep that sucker lit. Yeah, I think yeah, cause I thought like if it was still like on the ground, tipped up, and was still it was just like because it was the the snowflake was sitting like this, and then it rotated straight up, and I was like, okay, that's fine, because you could still like figure out where the piping for the gas line would be. But this is like, there, there's no gas line. I mean, there could be a gas line. I mean, who's... Coming in from the top. Coming in from the top and just sort of snaking around because we used a gas line in the in, in science class that was basically just a latex rubber-ish tube. Yeah. That was that big, you know, that big around. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it doesn't take much. Yeah, and but, for a flame that small, yeah. droplets... Effectively, it needs droplets. But I'm, like, they, they didn't have to plug anything in. That was just way too ad hoc and fast. I think they did plug it into a line. I, I don't. They have to have. Yeah, that's what, but even, but Aaron always loves the digitalization stuff that happened on the floor. Oh my God. That snowflake was actually fake and digitalized for a while. Then all of a sudden, we're like, is that... Did someone just walk behind it? Is that real? Is that real? It's real. Just so much of that was just so mind-blowing. And when they brought the Olympic flag across, I was... Well, one, I was seeing the jaggies behind them as everything kind of wiggled. Oh, yeah. But... Also, it would have been... So, I could not walk across that. Because any of the LED movement stuff would just disorient me and I'd be looking at the ground. We got, that's the thing is... So, even with a vision problem that you have, you, you would have already been through rehearsals on this. Yeah. Remember, they've gone through months of rehearsals on this. So, you instinctually know that nothing is in your way. You've already gotten the idea that nothing is going to be underneath your feet. You don't have to stare at the ground. And even so, like, I, like he's like, I don't know how they don't get dizzy. I'm like, none of them are looking down. Yeah. And they're all, because it is going to be disorienting with that LED screen beneath them. That was marvelous, though. Yeah, because like Beijing, Peking. So the the Dutch announcers were all all calling it Peking, and um, other people were calling it Beijing, and the name is Beijing, but the Dutch announcers kept saying Peking, and I'm like, I mean, I know it has two names, but anyways, um, where did I go in with that? I don't know. Yeah, I know. Oh. 2008 when they brought out the like the entire drummers um, oh, God. I've had Aaron watch that because it's obviously on YouTube and just watch the whole like four minute set of those drummers and like that's amazing but that's 2008 this is 2022 we are moving way more into the digitalization and this became super apparent in London yeah like they still had a lot of the physical stuff. Like they rose chimney, you know, chimney things out of the stage and stuff. But you know, like, like Vancouver and Russia were still like doing, even Rio were doing a lot of, what's the term in them? Practical effects. Yeah. But at like London and all the ones after that, they're all doing digital effects of like even. And, like, we expected, you know, Japan uh, Summer Olympics to be a little sparse because we were still in the major height of the pandemic and things had already been delayed by a year. But this is, like, you guys had time. And there was a lot of people involved. There was a lot of synchronicity. And there were a lot of children involved. Yeah. <laughs> and getting kids to synchronize like that is awkward. But anyways, um, I think... We'll watch one episode of What's This Bucket and go bed. You could turn on. We both yawned at the same time. <laughs>